field reverse configurations. Ready? Compact toroids, that's what he means by compact tori, are configurations characterized by the absence of a mechanical structure shaping the plasma. The, con the configuration is compact in the sense that the plasma extends to the geometrical axis and toroidal in the sense that the topology of the closed magnetic surfaces is that of a torus, a donut. Compact toro toroids can therefore combine the good confinement properties of closed toroidal configurations with the simple topology of open magnetic field systems. Chat, if you don't know what he's talking about here, he's talking about EVOs. He's talking about exotic vacuum objects. He's talking about ball lightning right here. That's what he's talking about. The fact that there's a whole section, that the whole section related to field reverse configuration is all about EVOs. O-M-G. Compact toroid. Oh, uh, wait, there we go. Compact toroids consist of two distinct regions, a closed field line region inside of a magnetic separatrix with radius R, and then an open field line sheath outside of the separatrix. Okay, I just said that there's definitely something inside the orbs, and now I'm already backtracking. Now I'm already backtracking. I'm going in the other direction. Now I'm wondering. What the hell is Paul Size talking about right now? And have we developed plasma balls that are freestanding? Because that's kind of what he's implying here. What he's saying is that there is a closed magnetic field structure on the inside. So there's something on the inside. When we talk about separatrix, what we mean is there's something on the inside that's confining the plasma. The plasma can't escape this internal structure. But then there's this external structure that's connected to the air that the plasma is also confined in, but it's it's uh, technically touching the air, right? So pretty wild here. Now, says, pla and that's what we say, the sheath, the open magnetic field sheath is the plasma sheath. I mean, remember, I'm the guy that determined that Paul Sizz figured out that we took the plasma sheath from our spy planes and we turned it into a drone. And now you can see confirmation right here on your screen. This is literally Paul Sizz's textbook saying that directly. Plasma is a well confined inside the separatrix and exhausted through the open field line region. <laughs> what is the open field lines? The open field lines are the axial lines. So if you take your planet, your Earth, your plasma orb, the open field lines are the toroidal lines that go around the planet, just like planet Earth. Those are the open field lines. And where does the exhaust come out in the plasma orbs? Right through the open field lines. That's what he's saying right there. And yes, it is not only like a Z-pinch, the theories come from the Z-pinch. Literally, he even says it in this textbook. I don't know if I skipped over it, but he says it. So he says, compact toroids can be classified according to the following two parameters. The ratio between the poloidal magnetic field B in the plane RZ and the toroidal magnetic field line along, is that theta? Zero? I don't know what this one is. The parameter usually denoted by S corresponding to the number of ion gyro radii between the field null and the separatrix. So what he's saying is there's two distinct things happening in your EVO. You've got your internal structure that is doing the fusion, and then you've got your outer external magnetic fields that's creating the shape. There you go. And then he does some math here. I don't really know about what this math means, but it's like apparently these different beta values between the separatrix area depend basically change the shape. So the shape of your orb of your plasma is defined by these ratios you see on your screen. We're learning a lot here. So the ratio of the magnetic field strength of the internal portion relative to the magnetic field strength of the external portion determines whether or not your plasma is going to show up as a toroid or if your plasma is going to show up as a sphere Mac. There you go. This is something I've been wondering for a while. Why is it that the plasma is spherical as opposed to being donut shaped? 
And the answer seems to be the ratio of the magnetic field strengths between the two different portions. That's what this says to me. And it says if the B is greater than B0 or whatever, then you get a field reverse configuration. And if you have B roughly the same, then you get a sphere map configuration. So the reason why it looks like a sphere has to do with the math of the, of the B field, of the magnetic field strength between the areas. This is pretty weird because this right here, this image on the screen, is looks like it's straight out of Tri-Alpha Energy's uh, fusion research. You see these non-equilibrium formations. So it says FRC formation and equilibrium. An FRC is a variety of compact toroids with the following characteristics. No appreciable toroidal field. Values of B on the order of unity. That, I think that's beta, so beta close to one. No rotational transform. All the equilibrium currents maintained by dimagnetism. A scrape-off layer exhausting heat and particles outside of the coil system. We accidentally discovered these in the 60s. It says a discharge tube is filled with a neutral gas and a bias magnetic field is applied. The gas is pre-ionized. Pre-ionization is what we read about in the aneutronic fusion dirt as well. It is theta? Okay. So here you can see the various configuration setups. Now, this is all based on the design of your system. Okay. So based on the design of your system, you can see the field reversal. So you see this is basically how the plasma is going to interact. What I found interesting about this paragraph here is that when we talk about the equilibrium currents being maintained by dye magnetism, it sounds like we've built a structure with this plasma where everything is stable. Everything is stable. Even the electrons moving through the, the trap, the mirror trap that we've created, we've created this mirror trap. I imagine it's a lot like a flowing river. It's a lot like a flowing river where if you look at the river itself, it doesn't look like there's a lot of movement happening. But if you were to like look at what's really going on at the detailed level, you would see all this movement everywhere. That's why I think the orbs are so amazing is that when you look at those orbs of plasma, that heat signature inside of them, it stays perfectly stable. It spins around, but it just stays perfectly stable. These plasma orbs must be an extremely stable configuration that can allow for energy buildup without allowing the plasma ball to become in, unstable or fall apart. And then it says down here, um, that was A, the discharge tube. B, current in the theta pinch coils is reversed on a fast time scale. That causes plasma bias field to implode radially. The oppositely directed magnetic field lines reconnect near the end of the, Z, the theta pinch the coil, forming a closed magnetic field configuration. The large magnetic tension at the reconnection region causes the FRC to contract in the axial direction until an equilibrium configuration is achieved. So this is how it works. Let's see what else we've got. Experiments that are currently happening. Look at all these different experiments. I'm not going to read through all these different experiments, but there's about... A dozen listed on here. This the first three are all in Russia. The experiments I had never heard of. Then you've got Japan experiments in field reverse configuration. And again, the dates on these 2005. Uh, these other ones don't have dates on them. Here's more in Japan. University of Washington. University of Washington. <laughs> Guys, do you know who comes from University of Washington? <laughs> Helion Fusion. Helion Fusion comes from University of Washington. David Kirkley comes from University of Washington. Not just David Kirkley. John Kramer comes from University of Washington as well, actually. So here you go. Uh, yet another Yahtzee chat. There it is. L L I'm going to read this one. LSX Mod, University of Washington, United States of America. This is the largest field reverse configuration facility in the world. It was converted to a TCS facility to perform experiments on controlling separatrix shape and to start up and sustain rotating magnetic fields. And there's a paper referenced here. This facility should provide information on MHD stability at larger values of parameter S. 
the STX, University of Washington, USA facility, is called the Star Thrust Experiment. Miller is mentioned from 1998. Wait, is this Mark Miller? Wait, which Mark? Oh, no, Mark Millis is who I was thinking. And in partially funded by NASA to investigate applications to space propulsion, such as by using rotating magnetic fields. Very powerful but short-lived rotating magnetic fields will be used to overcome the ionization and radiation barriers that have so far limited the use of this technique to low temperature plasmas. Wow. We just saw Paul says references the University of Washington, the largest FRC facility in the world. So why is David Kirkley uh, out of uh, doing helium fusion coming out of University of Washington? Well, they sort of had access to the largest FRC facility in the entire world. So when people are like, hey, Ashton, why do you think helium fusion is going to be the one? Well, because they kind of had a leg up. <laughs> I'm seeing them referenced in literally these scientific papers, uh, textbooks from the early 2000s. And then they became a company in 2013, 2014, something like that. And now they're going to be one of the world's leading fusion companies in the world. Yeah, well, I think they, I think they found something out possibly during this experiment. Going to go ahead and, and just take a guess at that. Then there's the Princeton MRX magnetic reconnection experiment. So Princeton is actually another one of the big fusion uh, companies coming out. Cornell has something. Los Alamos. Los Alamos. Compact plasma injector to study high density FRC formation, stability, and translation physics. Now, let me just point this out, guys, before we take a look at the propulsion side of it. <laughs> Does anyone ever know that like our DOE labs, like Los Alamos, were studying all this plasma stuff? Like we knew they were studying plasma, but we didn't know what they were doing. We just thought, oh, they're studying plasma, right? But no, it turns out they're literally studying EVOs. They're studying field reverse configurations. They're studying all the science that would be needed to make some plasma orbs that are freely floating and stable. They're studying all of it. 